In this video, we'll demonstrate how Blazor components can communicate with each other. Typically, you could have parent component to child component communication, or the reverse, child component to parent component communication. Then there is component to component communication, which isn't entirely true. Rather, one or more components communicate through a common intermediate class or service. We'll create a new Blazor web app and call our project ComponentCom Demo. We use .NET 8 for this demonstration and selected server for the render mode. You can choose WebAssembly if you like. It won't affect the code. For our server project, we select per page or component for the interactivity location. Also, we want to include the sample pages because we'll be using the sample counter page in the examples. In the counter page, you'll notice we set the render mode to interactive server. If you're using WebAssembly, this isn't necessary. Just to review, the counter page displays a current count variable, which is incremented when a button is clicked. Let's start with parent-child component communication. We'll add a components folder inside the components folder. Here we'll create our normal components as opposed to the page components. Page components have routes and a URL so you can navigate to them, while normal components are embedded inside other components and doesn't have a URL to navigate to. We'll add a new Razor component here called counter child. This will be the child component of the counter page component. It will simply display a header and the value of its count parameter. In the code section, we create a count parameter. This is a value that will be passed from the parent component. Before we continue, add the using directive to the imports file so we don't have to keep adding it to our components. In the parent component, the counter page, embed the counter child component and pass the current count value to the count parameter we created. Now, whenever the current count variable changes, the count value in the child component will be updated. For the child to communicate back to the parent component, it needs to notify the parent that something has changed in the child component. For this, we create an event callback parameter in the code section. Then we added a reset button. Whenever the button is clicked, it will execute the invoke reset count method, which will fire off or invoke the reset count event. In the parent component, we add the new reset count parameter and specify which method to execute when the event is invoked. Here, the reset count handler method will reset the current count variable to zero when the event is invoked. The parent to child communication is still working. When we click the reset button in the child component, the event is invoked and the parent component can respond. To demonstrate how more than one component can share data between them, we'll create two components in the component folder called comp A and comp B. For now, they'll just have headings, but we'll get back to them in a moment. Next, we create a page component and embed the comp A and comp B components. And for easy access, we added a nav item for this page in the nav menu. Now we need to create an intermediate service the two components can share. Add a services folder in the project and add an interface and its implementation class. We'll call them iComp service and comp service. The first thing the service needs is an action event to notify all the components that use this service when a change occurs. Then we have a count property that all the components can access and an increment count and reset count method. In the comp service class, we inherit from iComp service and implement the count property and action event. In the increment count method, we increment the count property. 
Then, if components subscribe to the onChange event, in other words, onChange is not null, we invoke the event. The same with the reset count method. We set count back to zero and invoke the onChange event if it is not null. To inject this service into the components, we register it in the program CS file and add a using directive for services to the imports file so we don't have to repeat it in the components. Now let's go back to our comp A and comp B components. First, we'll inject the service we just created. Also, we'll need to implement iDisposable. When we subscribe to the service event and the component is later destroyed, we need to unsubscribe from the event to prevent memory leaks. The component will display the count property in the service. And we created a button to execute the service's increment count method. To subscribe to the service's onChange event, we'll use one of Blazor's lifecycle methods. When the component initializes, we add the component state has changed to the service's onChange event. So when the event is invoked, the component will be re-rendered. In the dispose method, we simply remove the state has changed from the service's onChange event. We'll make the same changes to comp B. Inject the iComp service and implement iDisposable. It will also display the count property from the service and have a button. This will be a reset button and executes the reset count method from the service. Again, we need to subscribe to the service's onChange event in the onInitialized method and unsubscribe to the event in the dispose method. We don't need to make any changes to the page component. Now when we increment the count property in one component, it will be reflected in all the components that subscribe to the service's onChange event. The same with reset. The change is reflected in all subscribed components. Thank you for watching our video. For more tutorials on C Sharp, hit subscribe and click the reminder. Give us a like so the video can be visible to more people.